Hi all, and welcome back to uh, part 3 of the Photoshop 7 overall map project. Uh, at first I wasn't sure if I was going to do any more tutorials, but uh, after thinking about how the other tutorials went, I think that I'll, I'll do a little bit more uh, work on how I integrate the, the elements together. Uh, first off, I'm starting on the Highland la uh, layer with my Dirt 2 brush. I'm going to use my high-low smudge to rough that up a little bit to make some base ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mountain range on here and then uh, start integrating it in uh, with the background. And I'm going to go back and forth uh, with some of these tools quite a bit so uh, hopefully I don't uh, lose anybody but uh, right now I'm just kind of roughing up the ground and setting a base for the uh, mountain range to sit on and uh, some of the surrounding terrain which won't be so angled. I've made the, uh, the first part a little angular facing away from where the mountain range will sit and uh, this part that I'm making now is going to be kind of rounded and circular sort of flat looking to give you the feel that it's just kind of land around the mountain. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to the mountain range layer and the mountain brush. And I'm going to gingerly kind of uh, map out where I'm going to have my largest mountain. Uh, some little mountains. Like so. Maybe another little mountain over here like so. And uh, so you can tell that I've already integrated it in quite a bit, um, but I'm still going to go back to the highland layer and add even more dirt or perhaps uh, this grass layer bumping just over the whole mountain and surrounding area. And again I'm going to blur that around. That's just adding a little bit of dirt to the mountains which will almost be indistinguishable first from the mountains. But, uh, if I were to turn the layer off later you'll see that it does cover the mountains up in certain respects. I'm going to leave a little bit of the bumps just for dirt and rock and whatever might be laying around. And that looks pretty good. Uh, but I'm going to go up here to my grass one layer where I'm actually supposed to be putting my grasslands. Make this brush a lot smaller than it normally is. I'm just going to texture on a little bit. Maybe, yeah. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and put that on my highland layer. I think that just looks a little nicer. And this just roughs up the terrain even more, adding a little more dirt to it. I think that the goal with this uh, part of the tutorial is just going to be to uh, show how I would uh, integrate say the grasslands and the mountains together. So I'm going to take my grass 2 brush I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 20% uh, to start working in some color on my grass 2 layer. Instead of just going straight harsh like I was in the tutorial to kind of show you really quickly how I would do it, I'm going to actually kind of do it the way I do it working in a little piece at a time. Just add some color. Like so. Maybe even a little bit over top of the mountains. Especially the low parts of the mountains to kind of bring those together. I'm going to take the time here to uh, go ahead and add some snow to my one mountain peak that uh, is deserving of snow. Again, just kind of a starry looking pattern. And then the uh, snow smudge brush to get uh, a little more blurred, snowy sort of look and feel to that area. 
the uh, idea that the snow is falling down as well. Kind of sitting on it. Something along those lines. And I'm going to add a little bit more color. Again, way down in the 20-25% uh, range on the opacity. Just spruce up the color a little bit more into the green range, especially around the base of the mountains. And to transition from this uh, highland to lowland region, I'm going to go back to here and smooth this out even more. So that it's almost seamless with the uh, the background. So it's not such a harsh transition. And then I'm gonna throw some of that grass texture onto the open field. Very grassland sort of area. Back to grassland two. I'm going to turn the opacity down to maybe 26, 30%, a lot greener, uh, just to start out with because I know that this is going to be all grass. There we go, something like that. I may even blur the uh, grass one layer, the Gaussian blur. A really tiny Gaussian blur, by the way. Looks like I'm sitting at about 0.7. Just to give it that uh, little bit of a texture to the field. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and back to my highland layer. I'm going to smooth out the area over here where I'm going to put some trees. Go to my trees brush, my trees layer just throw these trees on here along the base of the mountain add sort of a forest yeah, so just throw some more mountains on here but I don't know where I'm going to throw these extra mountains yet so now I'll just finish up this uh, Tree layer. I'm going to blur it at maybe 0.5 just to kind of give it that feel. Back to my highland layer, to my uh, dirt 2 brush. And I'm going to throw another mountain range over here. Throw my grass color on there. And this will show you kind of the difference between mountains that I've more fully integrated and mountains that I just kind of threw on there. So you can kind of see that if you take the time to throw some extra texture in and around your mountains, uh, you're going to get a nice cleaner uh, integration with the uh, the ground. And hopefully this, uh, while sort of rushed and uh, jumping around, uh, you kind of see the way that I use my workflow. Uh, one last thing is I kind of, uh, near the end, I'll add a, uh, a levels layer to sort of uh, brighten this up and bring it all together we get to sort of a color that I like and uh, call it good. Thanks for watching.